Hello, everyone. Our practical demonstration broilers are five weeks old today. We brought in 10 of them. There are still 10 of them alive, very big and healthy. Look at them moving very luxuriously, moving like grandmothers and grandfathers, very, very big. Today, I would like to talk to you about managing heat in beds of this kind. Heat stress, heat exhaustion, heat paralysis, and all of these are issues you'll be encountering with beds that are as big as they are. I would like us to discuss measures to manage their situation so that we don't lose beds to heat. But before we do that, let's take a weight, let's take the weight of the beds and see how well we have performed over the last five weeks. So let me pick one out. Uh, well, you will notice that there is no feeder in here at all. We will be processing today. Um, so uh, we have to keep them off feed for a while. Uh, if you want to process your broilers, any feed you give them in less than six hours before you process is a waste. The feed will still be either in their crop or will still be in their digestive tract. So if you are going to process broilers, keep them off feed for at least eight hours, about eight hours, so you don't waste feed. So we took away feed this morning. They have not had any feed at all. It's around 11 a.m. So what we will be taking now is known as fasting weight, the weight they have when there is no food in their system. That is the weight we'll be getting as we uh, measure our beds right now. So we'll be taking their fasting weight. Let's start with the closest one to me here. Wow, the beds are quite heavy. Look at them. Look. Heavy legs, quite heavy in the hands. Very good conformity in terms of breast meat. No blisters. Proper bed. Let's see if we can get their weight, the weight of this one. Wow. The bed is very, very big, oh, quite big, heavy. See how it's working. At five weeks. All right, let's take his weight. As always, we'll be using our scale. And then I'll be using this to tie the leg so I can hang it on the scale here to get the weight. We have tied, we've tied the beds, we tied it by the leg here. I'm sure you're seeing it. It's tied. So our scale, can we see it? At 0, 0.00 kg. So we will measure the weight, hook it by the legs, and hold it here. 2.825 kg. 2.8 kg at five weeks of age. 2.8 kg at five weeks of age. This is what many people struggle to get at week six. We're already having 2.825 kg at five weeks of age. Let's take three more samples uh, to make it four altogether. Okay, uh, we are done with the first one. Let's pick another one. Shema, come, come here. Okay, so the second one, I hope this doesn't stress us to tie it. All right, the second, second one is ready. All right, let's get the weight of the second one. 2.715, 2.715. This is week five weight, fasting weight. This is 12.59, 1 p.m. They have not had anything to eat since morning. So this is fasting weight. All right, let's pick a third one and see. All right, this is our third bed. Let's go and see what we get. Bed number three. 2.665 kg. 2.665 kg. 2.665 kg. All right, let's 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 get the fourth one. We'll just do two more. Two more and we'll be done. So we'll make it five, 50% sampling. Okay, let me pick this one here. Wow. I wonder what weight this one will give us. Okay, this is our fourth bed. The fourth bed we have to weigh. Okay. 2.665. 2.665 kg. So our last our last sampling, let's just pick one. Which one do I pick? Let me pick this one that is lying down. This one looks a bit lighter in hand. I think this is the final one we will take, number five. Let's see what weight it gives us. Two point five kg on the dot. Two point five kg on the dot. This seems to be one of the smallest ones we have here at two point five kg on the dot. So our maximum weight 
was 2.8, 2.8 plus. And then we are having um, this weight at 2.5. What's the average weight so far? 2.674. So an average weight of 2.674 at the age of five with fasting weight. I think that is a lovely outcome. Once again, it was a combination of good management, a combination of um, quality feed. We use breed well professional feed from um, starter down to finisher. And then the stock was a good stock. We use Vertex broilers. So we have done all of this and we have a wonderful result. I'll talk about managing heat very briefly. Let me wash my hands and come back. All right, I'm back. I had to go wash my hands so I can take this session. Uh, I would like to state before I go on, um, we use, we supply Deo chips. I'm mentioning a brand name could make everybody come towards one brand thinking that it's a magic from that brand. The fact is that any brand, any hatchery you use with proper management, you can achieve the same result. Just ensure that the stock that is selected for you is a good stock. So all hatcheries can have bad stock. All hatcheries can have good stock. Once you get a good stock, your beds are good. The day old, you'll get similar results with similar management practices that we employed. Now, let's go into heat management. Um, when your beds come in at the beginning, you have to heat them up. You get charcoal, you get gas or electricity, and you provide heat for the beds. But as they are growing, their heat requirement continues to reduce. It reduces by about 2.5 degrees Celsius every week. So starting at 32 degrees Celsius, it reduces. By the time they get to three weeks of age, they no longer need heat again. By the time they get to four weeks of age, they are needing 24 to 25 degrees Celsius of heat. Anything above that, your beds are uncomfortable. Now, remember that normal room temperature is around 27 degrees Celsius for cool room temperature. Now, in Nigeria and other tropical countries, temperatures can get as high as 20, um, 29, 30, 31, 32. We have had situations in the far north where temperatures get even up to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, in such times, at such times and in such areas, you will need to look for measures to cool down your beds because the temperature range is higher than what they are supposed to be exposed to. So we, we will be looking at how to manage such situations for those of us who are using open-sided buildings. I will first like to explain some of the issues that happen when temperature is excessively high. Number one, you will notice that your beds drink too much water, excess water, more water than usual is the term. You notice they are panting, they will keep panting with their mouth open, breathing, if you stay close to them, you hear the sound as though they are having heavy breathing with their mouth open. You will find them lying down, opening one of their feathers to allow breeze, air to touch, have contact with their skin. You will find that they will spread their legs while lying down. Some of them want to bat with the sawdust or the litter you have there. So all of these are signs that your beds are undergoing excessive heat, more heat than normal. Now, after that heat season, okay, I want to say that heat, um, the heat effect on your bed can be divided into three zones. The first zone is when they are hot. The temperature is higher than normal. They are hot, but they can still cope. You find them panting, trying to uh, release heat from their mouth. You find all the signs I mentioned. The second time, the second zone is when they are exhausted, heat exhaustion. At the zone of heat exhaustion, your beds lie down. They are not moving. They are just quiet in the corner, unable to move. They are feeling so tired and weak. They are exhausted. Now, at heat exhaustion period, if you touch the body of your bed, it's as hot as beds having fever. Very, very hot at heat exhaustion. Now, the beds are tired. They can't move. If you push them in the afternoon, they will struggle and sit back on the ground again. They generally cannot go far. Now, the third zone is when we enter heat paralysis. Heat paralysis is the time when your beds cannot move. Heat has paralyzed them. If you push them with the leg, they will just roll to one side. They can't stand up and run away from you. They are unable to move. Heat paralysis. After heat paralysis, it goes to mortality. They die. So our responsibility as farmers is to keep our beds under a, a temperature zone where they are comfortable. 25 degrees Celsius downwards, they are comfortable. Now, uh, if your beds are not within the comfort zone, the thermal comfort zone, you will notice first that there will be a reduction in feed consumption. They will not eat as much feed as they should eat again. Now, that will translate into reduction in growth. The beds will not grow as fast as they should grow. It will also translate into um, poor feed conversion. Even the feed they eat, they will not be able to convert it to flesh properly or to eggs properly. You will notice decrease in um, egg production, decrease in egg production, just like flesh Conversion into flesh, into meat is, is reduced. Egg production also drops when heat is excessive. Now, that excessive heat weakens their immune system. You will notice that bears die very well. They have sicknesses when it is hot. And no matter the drugs you give, you're most likely, they will most likely not recover under the heat. 
situation. This is because their immune system is depleted, is weakened, and they are not able to properly um, protect the bed away from disease or help themselves recover from disease. Uh, one step, one very important step to do when you are treating beds during heat season is to ensure the temperature is correct. Otherwise, all the drugs you are giving will not work. Right? And then we also have the issue of uh, mortality that occur. Several farmers uh, have cases of mortality usually in the early evening from uh, about 5 o'clock till 7 p.m. That is the range. You find a lot of dead bears within that time. The bears have absorbed the heat, absorbed it so much, and they have passed their limits. Around 4 o'clock, you are heading towards heat paralysis. 5 o'clock, you are picking dead bears everywhere. So if you have a, if you are in, a, in, a, in an area where the heat is excessive, ensure to be at your farm between 5 to 7 p.m. to monitor your beds and help them to recover. Take measures that will help them in case they are at the border of heat paralysis and mortality. I hope this is clear. Now, if I will, I will talk briefly on how to manage heat for both small farms and big farms. The methods are different. So if you have a few beds, let's say 20 beds, 25, 50 beds, 100 beds, even 200 beds, you are a small farm, a small farmer, micro small farming. That is still regarded to as backyard farming. Now, if you have such small beds, there are measures you take when your beds are undergoing, um, are exposed to excessive heat. Now, some of the measures you take during excessively hot days are to, number one, open the curtains. Open the curtains and ensure cool air blows into your pen and hot air goes out. Open your curtains all round, all round, from early in the morning till late at night. All curtains should be open. Now, number two, ensure the liquor on the floor of your pen is always fresh and dry. Remember your beds pass poo out on this liquor. That poo causes the liquor to be hot, very hot. Try bagging poultry poo inside the bag and keep it very, very hot. That thing generates heat in the poultry room. So ensure that if you're having situations of heat, the litter is always dry and it is fresh. You reduce uh, heat emissions in the pen. Now, the third measure you should um, adopt is to ensure there is fresh, clean, and cool water all the time. The water level should not go down while your beds are struggling to reach it. It should be top level at all times. Cool water. If you need to add ice block, ice cubes into the water, please do it so that the temperature of the water can drop. As the best take it, the internal temperature also reduces. So add ice cube, cool, clean water at full level at all times. So the, the next thing is to ensure that you remove feeders. See, it's a, it's a matter of how fast should my beds grow uh, or how many should I lose to heat? If your pen is bad, where your, your, the place is always hot and your, your efforts are limited, please remove their feeders from around 11 in the morning. That is when the sun is almost overhead, temperature rises. Remove the feeders. Leave them with only water. Let them take that till 7, 8 p.m. Then give them light throughout the night. Let them eat throughout the night till 11 a.m. again. Then you remove feeders. You will, make, you will ensure your best survive. They don't die due to heat stress. And the growth may be retarded a bit, removed because of the lesser hours of feeding. But then you won't lose your beds. Now, the reason for removing feeders is, we don't. number one, we don't want obstructions to the path of the drinkers. There should be no obstruction on their way to drinking water. Number two, we'll be adding more drinking um, locations during the hot time. And so we need more space. So we have to remove the feeders away. Number three, feeding in the afternoon produces heat. Even you as a human being, when you eat, you sweat. Same thing with the bed. Metabolic um, processes result in release of heat. So that feeding causes more heat for them. So remove so that they are surviving. They are drinking water, but they are not eating. Now, in that drinking water you are giving to them, we said you should add ice, right, to make it cool. We also need you to add multivitamins and electrolytes. Amino acids, electrolyte, multivitamins. These are needed to replenish the lost electrolytes from the body of your beds. Now, as your beds are passing out um, poo, you will notice when they are hot, they are drinking a lot of water and they are passing out watery poo very frequently. Now, a lot of electrolytes, amino acids, vitamins are being depleted as they are taking all of these. To help ensure there is a balance of uh, nutrients in their body, give them electrolytes, give them uh, multivitamins and amino acids. There are combinations that, are, uh, that contain all of these three. Go to your vest stores, ask that you need the electrolyte that is mixed with, uh, combined with multivitamins and amino acids. They will give you such formulations. They are, they, they are plenty with several brand names. Uh, use it for your beds during the hot season. And, uh, it will help you. Finally, on this point, uh, the stocking density is important. Stocking density is the number of beds you put per, um, per space. If you have been putting 500 beds comfortably in that space, now that it is hot, reduce it by half. Let the bears have more space, more space to move around to dissipate heat and to look for corners to stay. 
So half your stocking density, reduce your stocking density to ensure that the bears have more chances of survival. Now, now I'll mention one last practical thing to do when your beds are very stressed and are either uh, heading towards paralysis or are already paralyzed. Now, if you go to your pen in the evening, around four, around five, around six, you notice your beds are so weak, you tap them, they are not moving. You kick them with your leg, they are not moving. You hold them and drop them. They will just land where they are and sit down them. They have been paralyzed by heat. Or they are the extreme edge of exhaustion that will soon translate into paralysis. Now, at such times, touch their body. It will be extremely hot. What you should do at this time is to get a bucket of water. This is for small-scale farmers. If you have large farm, you can't do that. But if you have a small-scale farm, get a bucket of normal water, cool water, not ice block not um, just normal cool water. Hold your bears by the feather, by the wings, rather, by the wings, and dip their whole body into the water. As you dip them into the water, stay for like 20 to 30 seconds is okay. Remove it from the water and keep it by your side. Let a normal breeze blow on it and cool it. The bed will get up after some time. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the bed will stand up and begin to move around. Now, this will help you if your bears are at the last stage. By the time you have dipped two beds into that water, you'll notice that water is already hot. You have to throw it away and get more. For small scale farmers, this can help you revive bears that are at the point of paralysis or even getting close to the point of mortality. I hope, please, while doing this, ensure you don't dip the head into water. From the neck down is where you're meant to dip into water. I hope this is clear. Now, let me talk about um, large scale farms. Let's say you have 500 beds upwards. Uh, you are not large scale yet, but let me just classify all of this. And from 500 beds upwards, it's a rough idea. So if you fall into this category, you can be dipping beds into water. Your investment is running into so much amount of money now. You need to, be, you need to invest in technology that will make your beds comfortable. Now, if you are not running an EC housing where temperature can be controlled, you will need to bring things into your farm that will help you reduce or manage temperatures. Now, the simplest of them is our circulatory fans get fans into that place. Now, fans are not a very excellent tool, but they help. They help you to move hot air around so that there is no zone that has in your pen, no thermal zone in your pen that has a lot of heat. So it moves the heat around and the normal convection current carries the hot air outside and brings in cool air to replace it. Your beds will lie under the fan and, uh, under the fan and feel better. So that is the simplest introduction. Put in fan, maybe wall fans, if you can install wall fans that will face down or standing fans, any of them. Circulatory fans are a wonderful um, way to help. Number two, heat extractors. There are different types of heat extractors. There are ones we use in the kitchen. There are ones we use in closed spaces. There are ones we can use in open spaces. Um, get one. There are poultry heat extractors that can be used for poultry fans. Farms. Get those heat extractors. They suck out hot air and allow cool air to go in. So it's a wonderful alternative for you. One or two in your farm, no matter how big it is, will drop the temperature. Number three device you could um, you could install on your farm are sprinklers. Sprinkler systems are systems that make use of the principle of condensation. This is what they do. Um, there are sensors in the automatic sprinkler system. They sense the temperature. Once the temperature has passed a particular level, they will immediately release droplets, fine, tiny droplets of water all around. These droplets of water will suck in the air. And of course, since the water is cool, it will vaporize some of the water and the temperature will drop. Um, layer production farm, air production farms, uh, a lot of them make use of these broilers. Because of the nature of the litter, it's usually a difficult uh, decision um, for broiler farmers who are making use of deep litter system. But for those in cages, it's an excellent way to drop temperature. It's not 100% effective, but it helps. There are also humidifiers you can introduce into your farm and um, other novel ideas you can take to ensure your beds are cool. The whole idea, the whole idea is just to ensure temperature drops. Whatever idea works for you, research properly, speak with, uh, with experienced people, let them see the nature of your farm and proffer solutions that will work within your context. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.